Goedemiddag allemaal. Ik ben Raoul, de zaalmoderator voor vandaag. Uh, jullie zitten hier bij Ervaar Toegankelijkheid, oftewel Experience Accessibility. Uh, wordt gegeven door uh, Drazen. Ja, ja, ja. Drazen. <laughs> Mag het op verschillende manieren uitspreken, hoor ik al. Uh, als het goed is, hebben jullie allemaal een brilletje gekregen. Uh, voor de mensen online, die hebben natuurlijk geen bril, maar ook daarvoor zal de experience uh, leuk zijn, hoor ik al. Dus, uh, de vragen mogen tussendoor. Dan zal ik de vraag doorspelen. Drazen? Ja. Veel plezier. Dankjewel. Zo. Gaan we. Nou, wel... Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, the reason with the mispronunciation of my name, it's written differently all over the place. So, you know, pick one, choose one, say it, I'm fine with it. So, okay. Welcome to the presentation. It's all about accessibility and how people with different accessibility needs experience the world. Um, but when we talk about accessibility, most people always think of, oh, just color blindness and that's it. So for today, we're just gonna focus on the eye. But first, before doing that, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Drajan, Drajan Jankovic. I'm a full stack developer at Society. Uh, I've been doing full stack development for the last 16 years and I've done everything from database development all the way to UX research. Uh, and I specialize in accessibility. As hobbies, currently working on an Iron Man and a bunch of other costume projects. Uh, I love manga and anime, which is also where my other hobby comes from. I love making robots and things like that. Usually it ends up with me electrifying myself, but you know, it's a learning process. How did my journey with accessibility start? Uh, tragic story, not really, it happens to a lot of people, but I got uh, leukemia 10 years ago, and I ended up in a hospital because they didn't know how severe it was. I ended up for four months in total isolation, like in one of those bio rooms that you see in movies, Nobody in, nobody out, everything is on lockdown. Because of that, I wasn't allowed access to my PC because yeah, it's a huge thing, not really easy to bring inside. But they gave me a PlayStation 3. They cleaned it up so that it would be allowed in, into the bio room. And because of that, I had to use a single controller for four months to use it for the internet, for YouTube, Netflix, things like that. It was the worst experience of my life. Not, not the cancer bit, the, the using the controller. It was so, so bad. And because of that, I decided I can improve this for more people, not just myself, but for others. And I investigate a lot of time into accessibility, accessibility techniques, what is actually causing the issues, and how can we solve them, or try to solve them. As I said, today we're not going to focus on all of those things, because there's way too many things. But because the first thing most people think of is color blindness, we're just gonna take a look into the eyes and how do they actually work? What causes the issues? First of all, your eyes have a lot of different parts. You have rods, cones, and then the light wave comes in, it hits them. The rods allow you to see movement, so me doing this, is because your rods are getting the light reflected off me into your eyes, and you can see that. The fact that you can see all of these cute little colors on my shirt, that's because of your cones. They get the reflected light and then split it up to either red, green, or blue. Depending on what lenses you're currently wearing, you're only seeing one side of the spectrum and not everything. So how does that bit work then? Well, Oatmeal made a really good comic, and I'm not gonna keep take credit for this, this is pure oatmeal, because I couldn't simplify this more than they did. You have dogs. We've heard all of it. All of us have heard it. Dogs see in black and white, or dogs see in grayscale. They actually see in green and blue. And if you combine those two colors, you get yellow, so they can see green, blue, yellow, and shades of those. For us humans, we get the cool little red one. And because of that, we get to see various combinations more. Like, if you combine the yellow that we get from green and blue with the red, you get orange. If you combine blue, you get purple, and so on. Introduce the black and white from the uh, rods, and you get also different shades, like pink and so, so forth. And then comes a butterfly. And they have two cones, 
we have no name for what color they're seeing. Nothing. It's a complete mystery to us what color that is. We kind of can guess where in the light spectrum it hits, but we don't have a name for that. Now, if I said that this was the best animal in the world when it comes to eyesight, who would agree with that? If you can see five colors instead of three. Anybody? Hands up. Is there an animal with more than five, do you think? Yeah? How many do you think? 19. 19? More or less than 19? Yes. Less. All right. <laughs> well, the true champion of color is a mantis shrimp. It lives fairly deep in the water. It's a little shrimp. And it has 16 color receptors. So, if we say that the first two are ultraviolet and infrared, uh, what are the others? <laughs> like, there's 11 others. What are they? We have no idea. And why does an animal that lives in super deep, dark water need to see this much color? There's no light there. How, why, is it, why does it need this? So, as Oatmeal said, a rainbow to them is like a beautiful thermal explosion of color. But then it comes the fact, like, how does then color blindness work? How do we see color? What, what's making us miss certain features? It comes in four types. It's usually caused by either missing or faulty cones. Uh, if it's a faulty cone, it can be just slightly to the side, so when the light comes in, it just misses it. These glasses are actually kind of simulating that. It's shifting the light too much to one side, so you're missing that cone. And it's a genetic disorder passed on the X chromosome. So men, it's your fault, just so you know. Uh, one in seven men has color blindness, roughly. And one in 200 women. So. But in a later slide, I'll come back to why it's better to be in the one in seven group than the one in, well, you'll see in the other slide, why it's kind of bad on their side as well. As I said, it has four different types. We have regular vision, uh, deuteranadopia, where you're missing green. So if you're wearing, uh, I think there's one person with green lenses here. <laughs> They're missing that one. Protonotopia, you're missing red. Tritonotopia, you're missing blue. So red glasses are seeing this, blue glasses are seeing that, basically the entire time. But all of you are here in monochromacy because we're shifting every color, we're shifting to either red or blue. And monochromacy also has a different name, Achromatopsia, it basically means you have zero color in your eyes. Uh, and because of that, usually there's other health issues associated with it, because it's not just a fun day at the park. There's a girl on TikTok, she has this, and she actually has an app on her mobile phone that picks, uh, helps her pick out her clothing, because she once went to friends and went like, look, beautiful, isn't it? Because she based everything on patterns and shades she could see, but she was wearing bright purple pants with a bright green shirt with a tiger print on it. To her, it looked pretty fine. To the rest of the world, it looked like a toxic dump. So, you know, that's how those things can in interact with each other. This slide is 10.2 million colors. Each of these colors, your eye can individually distinguish from each other. You, if I point here in the bottom, you'll know that that's different from there. And even if I go up one pixel, you'll realize that it's a completely different color. If you have red lenses, I'm gonna trip over here and die. <laughs> what color is here in the bottom? For those with the red lenses. Orange, red probably? Blue ones, what's here? Cool. Red, what's up there in the corner? Dark purple, black, probably, it really depends on the brightness of the beamer. And for the blue ones? There we go. So all of you are seeing basically a different thing. If you have red, it's probably like a circle gradient going from black over there to bright red over here. And if you have blue lenses, then it's blue at top, but green at the bottom and almost like gradient down. And this is how we perceive color differently, and if you just have a slight shift, it can change 10 million colors into only three colors. So, should I, should I put it back so people can check it out with different colors? 
quickly switch with your partner next to you <laughs> if they have a different color. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we have time, don't worry. <laughs> the difference is quite huge, right? Like <laughs> All right, so let's go to a quick test. If you paid attention, you should be able to answer these five questions. No, just kidding. It's not that bad. All of you have probably seen one of these. It's called an Ishihara test, and it's a basic eye color test. What number do we see? Seven. Seven. There are a few people going confused. Yeah, seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, seven. So seven in all of them? OK. I can't see this one and this one. To me, they're just eh. And this one looks probably like a two or a three. So because I myself actually do have color blindness. <laughs> so for me, this was a very difficult slide to figure out, and I had to ask people like, hey, can you actually let me know what number is in here? So I can tell people what I'm... <laughs> Another one. What do we see here? Thirty? Somebody said over there, no? Fifty? 80 from Adam? All right. It's the word no. This one is called... So this is your, the same Ishihara test that we did before. The only difference is that this is a reverse Ishihara test. So if you can see the word no, you probably have some kind of color blindness. It's made that only people with color blindness can see this. So Robert, Adam, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> to me, the no over there is fairly easy to see. It looks almost ochre yellow in the middle of a green field. So, <laughs> a little fun fact, because there's also some fun facts associated with color blindness. Uh, because you're looking usually with a missing color, it's way easier to see difference in hues, because your eyes are kind of more focused to the other colors. And because of that, they did some research, and in 1940, they found out that people who have color blindness can see camouflage better, because they can see the movement and slight shade changes better. A little picture for you guys. The text below should be different, <laughs> depending on glasses that you're wearing. <laughs> in the picture, if you have red glasses, how many sunflowers are actually yellow colored for you? Like have a distinct different color because it's a grayscale picture. You probably don't see any change. It's just all of them look the same. But there's one flower that's different and for the people in blue, you guys clearly see it. For the people in blue, what color is the sky? Gray. It's actually red in the picture. It's just shifting everything to blue but because blue and red combined go more into the dark gray colors, you can see gray more. So, this wouldn't be a quality uh, testing and so on if we didn't talk a little bit about UX and front end and how we can actually make some impact here. How can we actually help people with issues like this? If you're in UX, don't trust color. Very simple. Supplement colors with icons, for instance. Give a different meaning to the color as well. So if you, have, if you just have the color and you say, click on the green button, with my color blindness, most green buttons look orange-brown. So which green button should I click? So just say things like, click on the green button that says log in. Or if you have error messaging like this, triangle means it's a bigger warning than a green check mark. Even if I can't see the color, the meaning of it is still there. So you're translating the context as well. Provide options like colorblind mode if your app allows that. Basically, how they did it here in two dots, you can either choose your own colors and then pick colors that you experience more uh, easily and better, or you can just add icons to each of the little dots. So even if you're fully colorblind, you can still see the difference, and you can still fully enjoy the app the way it was intended to. Figma users. There's a bunch of cool projects that you can use. We are colorblind, color filters, ally project. Add them. It will 
during your designing phase, it will already help you make the changes so you don't have to go first into testing, then come back and then go for, like you can fix most of those issues already. And another really cool one is called focus order. Give your developers already some notifications saying like, hey, when people come into this page, I want this to be the first thing they tab into, this the second, this the third, and so on. So they, you're already saying what the order should be. They shouldn't have to guess. Front-end developers, Axe DevTools, covers about 80% of all your issues automatically. Whether you run it as a linter or as an automated test or a gate in your pipeline, it will pick them out, warn you, tell you what you should do. Same for Lighthouse. It's a browser extension already in your browser. You just run it afterwards, and you'll get like this nice breakdown of, hey, these are the issues you have. This is the rule in WCAG. Find the best example. Try and fix it like that. And you can also do it the same as Axe. Put it in your pipeline. Have it just stop building if there's too many errors happening. Don't wait until it goes into test and then come back and so on. Another good one for front end, uh, Tab Ally. Basically, run it on your page. It will quickly scan the entire page, pressing Tab for you. And it will mark out which things were first, and you'll get like this nice path. If it doesn't match what your um, UX has said how it should be, then you know, like, we need to go back to the drawing board, take a look what's going on here. But as I said, the eyes are influenced by more things than just your little cones and rods. Like, it's, they influence how you see and perceive color, but other things do as well. And one of the big ones is migraines and auras. And if you have migraines, then you know probably what an aura is. Basically, it just blinds you on one side most of the time. It's a moderate to severe headache. Uh, yeah, indeed. Felt as a throbbing pain on one side, and it's throbbing because you're actually feeling your blood vessels behind your eyes just pumping. So it's really creepy. Uh, many people have symptoms such as feeling sick or actually being sick. In my case, I get violently sick. Uh, you get increased sensitivity to light or sound. I have full darkening curtains, and I have isolating noise panels throughout my uh, bedroom because I can hear a needle drop in a different room. That's how sensitive my ears become. My eyes are so sensitive that light physically hurts at that point. And it's very common. And like I said before with the color blindness, one in seven men, really sorry women, you get migraines one in five times. Like one in five women will have a migraine. And for men, it's one in every 15. Uh, one of the research said it's probably because men cause the issues for women giving the migraine, so, you know. <laughs> You never know. There's some truth in it, probably. This is what it looks like. If you have an aura migraine, half your vision is just gone. And what you then see when you look at uh, UX, how can we solve this, or front end, how can we solve this? Uh, not much. You can limit movement on your site. Uh, movement can cause uh, overstimulation of the eye, causing migraines to happen. Uh, brightness and flashes, you can try and look into that. Uh, the medical field, my medicine for migraine, uh, because it's always, research says that uh, blindness always happens on one side of the face. What they've done is, if this is my pill case, this part has the logo, and this part I'm blind on. Most people are blind on their left when they have migraine. So all of them Important information is on the right, how to use your migraine medication, when to use it, and so on. Because they already saw, like, so many people are blind on the left, put it there. And it's probably because the pressure that causes the issue is on the left side of your brain. Front end, something. Uh, the one thing that we from front end side can do is give the user an option to come back to your website and continue where they left off. If you have a form that doesn't have too much business critical data, like uh, social security number or banking number, allow them to save it and then continue later on. Gives them an option to at least come back when the headaches are gone, even if that can take two or three days sometimes. Another big one, tired and eye fatigue. Who here is tired? Raise your hand, please. Liars. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Tired and eye fatigue, especially when we were students, most of us have been burning the late night candles. Uh, so you get burning eyes, itchy eyes, red eyes, 
things like this make you either blink or squint and basically lowers your vision, missing some extra parts on the page. Causes eye discomfort. Uh, if you have eye discomfort, you're more likely to look away from something that's bright. Again, you're missing parts of your information. Double vision. Uh, that might also be alcohol, but most of the time it was double vision. Blurry vision. Uh, when you are severely stressed or when you're severely anxious, what happens is your body decides, I should pump in some adrenaline because I think you're being chased by something really bad. So what then happens as adrenaline pumps in, but you're not using it, it actually starts condensing behind your eyes. And simplified medical terms, medical students, please don't kill me. Although you're probably online anyway, so it's fine. Um, it condenses behind your eyes and kind of pushes your eye. So your lens changes a little bit of shape and this is what you see, a lot of blur. From a UX standpoint, what can we do about it? Uh, simplify flows. Does every form need all of the data that's there? Do I always have to type in my name if I'm already logged in? Do I have to uh, put in my address if it's already somewhere else on the page? Things like that. Uh, shortcuts, keys and skipping. Um, have hotkeys enabled. Hotkeys can be used by people with screen readers as well. It allows them to skip through the form very quickly to go to, for instance, the name field of your form. But for people that don't have any issues, these same hotkeys can be reused as power user. Uh, think of help desk. They have to do certain forms every single day, multiple times a day. If you provide them hotkey options to just skip the unnecessary information, you'll speed up their work. I'm sorry. OK. Uh, reduce interruptions and distractions. Things like phones. <laughs> Make them that they're not there. Remove GIFs from pages that don't need GIFs on it. Um, remove parts of the form that are absolutely not needed. Why is a user constantly being asked, like, hey, can you confirm this? Can you confirm this? It's like, it's your system. Let me either confirm it once or, you know, don't ask me this many times. And especially don't pop things up every single question. It happens so many times, the amount of modals that open. And translate context. This one is especially important when also thinking of uh, international sites. Often we translate either a sentence for a sentence or a word for a word, and then we lose context. We lose either how aggressive something's being said or what the true meaning is behind a certain idiom. And the worst part is when they actually translate idioms directly. So you get really weird sentences. There's a really nice book called I Always Get My Sin. It's uh, Dutch English translations that are very weird. Like, I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart and my wife's bottom too. That doesn't mean the same thing. <laughs> in Dutch, it means, nice. it means the same, but not the same in English. So things like that. Make sure that you don't just translate the sentence, translate the context of it. And same with colors that I showed earlier with the icons. The icon is translating the context of the warning message as well. Allow for teaming. Provide users with things like dark modes, zoom in modes, so on, so that basically they have more control over it. Reduce blue light mode, especially if, you're, if you know that your users use your product mostly in a dark room or at night, then reducing blue light will actually remove a lot of fatigue on their eyes. Content choreography. This comes a little bit back to what we talked about earlier with um, flow order, focus order, and tab order. Like, make sure that everything is in a chronological order. Don't make them go, when they press tab or something, that they suddenly go down to the bottom of the page, and then the next tab brings them back up, and so on. Like, keep it logical. Keep it, if you're in the Western world, top to bottom, left to right. If you're in one of the um, Middle Eastern uh, worlds, then basically, or countries, not worlds, uh, basically then reverse it. And there's actually, CSS can solve a lot of that for you already. Use enough spacing between words and sentences, uh, as you can see. I tend to do that a lot in my presentation because it's just easier to read, easier to see what changed on the page and not that everything is condensed. Something I didn't do on this slide, uh, images to ease the amount of text. 
a lot of text on this one, not so many images. But basically, again, it comes down with choreography. It eases the eye for a moment. Just make sure that when adding images, that it doesn't break this one, um, reducing interruptions and distractions. For front-end, save sessions. I'm going to come back to this one a lot. Uh, basically, allow the user to save their progress. If nothing important is being saved that's uh, privacy critical, then give them the option to save. Say, let, let them save their basket, let them save the form that they're currently in while doing something else. Automate forms, prefill. If I'm already logged in as a user and you have my address uh, inside my profile data, you have my name inside your profile data, why am I being asked to fill this thing in? Just let me com confirm. Com let me confirm the data, and if it's different, then let me change it. But until then, there's no need for all of this. Painting, this one is more technical. Uh, minimize how often the page repaints, and I put a little test there from one of the sites I, I was working on. Whenever you make a change on a page, what happens is that the browser quickly paints everything. It basically removes everything and then puts it back. It's just how browsers work. And you want this number to be as low as possible. You don't want it to paint too often or too much or too long. Uh, the reason is it will just start flashing after a while. Yeah. It will just start flashing, and flashing can cause these issues. Uh, I think this is the, one of the final two ones, depression. Uh, how do people with depression experience the world? Often like this, they just skip. Uh, it's, even if it's something very important to them and their personal experience, they'll skip it. If there's nothing really attention grabbing, nothing that can quickly pump a little bit of dopamine or serotonin, they'll just skip it. They don't care. Even if in a normal situation they would care and it's really important to them. So it's extremely difficult to, either from a UX point or a front end point, it's extremely difficult to fix this one uh, because you have to take a look and it has to load fast. Uh, if something loads fast, they're, you're more likely to grab someone's attention quickly. Uh, put a lot of an attention grabbers and reduce the stress. Don't make them work too much just to do a simple action. They'll, then they're, you're certain they'll skip. Good example of that one is 113, suicide prevention. Their banner, it doesn't matter what kind of eye problem you have, you know this banner is there. It grabs your attention immediately. Everything else is like gray value, but that banner is red because that's where they want your attention. That's what they want you to do. So even if you are depressed and you're thinking of things like this, you'll immediately get that attention there. Final one, anxiety. Already mentioned with a bunch of other pits. It's basically if you're putting stress on your user, they start seeing double, they start seeing fuzzy, or they'll just skip your content in general. Basically what it does, it, it's mostly this one. It gives them a very big feeling of, I'm inadequate. I did this form wrong, and because of that, they'll just skip it. They, they won't do it, they won't repeat it, they won't come back as a customer or whatever. Uh, when it comes to anxiety and depression, not really small numbers. These are from 2020, just before the pandemic hit, and then just after the pandemic hit, people started feeling very anxious about everything. And combine that with the current uh, aftermath, combine it with the current economic status, the housing status, things like that, people are getting more and more anxious. And even if you have like this super happy website, people will start skipping things because they don't feel like it's grabbing their attention in the way they want. So how can we solve it? Timed actions. Uh, how often have you gotten a message like, I think I'd have it, yeah. Your session is expired, sign out. Did you see a timer on the page telling you this would happen? Probably not, but you know it's gonna happen because it's happened before, so now it's gonna happen again, and it's just pushing you into like, oh, I need to hurry up, like, when is this timer over? So remove those if you can. If you can't remove them, think of a way of how can you prolong them. And that's more of a, a front-end side, I'll come back to that one later. When it comes to errors, if a user made an error and it's their mistake, let them know. But if it's not, then guide them. Guide them through the steps of what can we do different as a user to not get this error again. In this case, it's a server error from Instagram. I can't do anything about that. They could have just said this, error, dismiss. Do I try again? 
Was it my fault that the error was there? Like, what is it? But if you guide them with correct messaging, they'll feel more at ease that they didn't do anything wrong. Something went wrong on the website site. And they can try again in a few minutes. And this will actually make your users come back more often because of simple things like this. Uh, forms, easy to understand. Basically, prevent failure. Don't make failure a way for a user to see that they did something wrong. Yeah. Quick, I'm going to finish my sentence, and then they're cutting me off. Things like password must be six. Why wasn't it said any, anywhere? Birthday. Why is this not mandatory, but this is? There's no difference between those. So don't make your user fail before showing them something. Now, front-end solution already come, came to that. Allow people to extend sessions or save them. Prevent errors, inputs. Make sure that there's something picking up before they submit so that they can already make changes. Give users the ability to undo. If you can implement grace timers, so if I submit a form that I have like a few seconds to go like, oh, no, I made a mistake, undo, even better. Card and technobility, that man over there. <laughs> they have more different glasses, gloves, and things like that downstairs. Go and visit them and try and use it on your own website. See how that feels. Uh, I think they have full-on blindness as well for testing. Thank you. <laughs> See, just in time. Drazen, thank you yeah. very, very much. No problem. Since we are in the overtime, uh, details. have some time for one question. We don't have any questions online, so yeah. this audience, does someone I mean, in the audience have one I'll, I'll be downstairs with technobility as well. Okay, okay so you have time to, yeah. to answer some questions. Yes. Okay, then we leave it to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Small present for you. Oh. There you are. Thank you very much. Okay.